Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Okay, welcome to the podcast, everybody. In this episode, we discuss the pros and cons of using credit to fund your flight training. Now, with flight training costs ever increasing, the typical PPL student is now spending somewhere in the region of £17,000 if you take into account additional exam attempts, extra hours, all that kind of thing in 2023. So it's inevitable we've been asked by many students what our thoughts are about using credit to fund training rather than income, okay? Now, just to be clear, we are not offering any financial advice or condoning the use of credit to fund your training, okay? In fact, I would say to you, steer away from it unless you have very few options, but it is still an option, okay? Especially if you're going on to a uh, career in aviation where potentially your income will be paying off any debts that you accrue through training. Key thing is though, whatever you do, make sure that you fully understood the terms and conditions of any credit agreement that you enter into and any potential downsides if it doesn't work out for you, okay? So our general line is, especially if you're learning just as a hobby, you know, if you can't afford to do it without borrowing money, I'd probably just leave it alone. Okay, wait until the time is better or see what other options are available to you. The reason is if you can't afford to learn to fly now without credit, on completion of the training, you still need to fly. Okay, you still need to fly to keep your license current. And for most people, you need to be doing around about an hour a month just to keep your confidence as well. So let's say that you've accrued this debt for your training. And let's say, you know, let's be really realistic about it. And let's say it's 20K with the interest, you've got to be paying that back. You know, maybe you're paying three, 400, 500 pound a month back to pay this loan off, okay? You've still got to find money to fly on top of that. So unless your financial circumstances changed dramatically since you actually started the training, you're probably going to be struggling to pay this debt off, let alone find money to fly with as well. So just just bear all these things in mind. You know, it's not usually a good idea that being said if you know your financial situation is set to improve maybe you know when you qualify in your job your your wages are going to significantly increase or maybe there's some other uh, financial circumstance you know in the very near future is going to change the affordability of flight training probably again wait until that happens and then start your flight training but if you're insistent on starting now and you're going to use credit make sure that it's affordable for you and make sure that these options are a dead cert in the future you know don't don't get into this this credit situation if you don't think you're going to be able to pay it back so for those of you who are becoming airline pilots you know unless you've got 100k burning a hole in your back pocket the reality is that debt is going to be inevitable um, whether that's in the form of secured loans or salary sacrifice schemes as some of the airlines offer the likelihood is most people are either borrowing money from Uh, loans or from family or other sources such as equity and homes and things like that you know none of these things are necessarily a good idea but that's what people do you know most people haven't got a hundred thousand pounds sat around uh, waiting for their training so at PPL level see there are fewer options okay Um, you know like we said the typical uh, PPL is spending somewhere in the region of seventeen thousand pounds as it stands at the moment in seven in twenty twenty three. That will go up with inflation each year. So for PPL level, there are less options available. You know, you're talking unsecured loans, generally high street lenders. Uh, there are a few um, other lenders that um, will lend money for flight training, and then credit cards, which again usually have extortionate interest rates. These type of um, unsecured loans are generally they're going to require decent credit scores, full time employment, uh, affordability checks, all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm not going to give you the details of any of these companies. We're not condoning any of this stuff. But if you go onto Google and you type in private pilot finance on Google, it's going to bring up most of the options 
that are available to you. So credit cards, um, I'm not a big lover of credit cards, to be honest. Uh, they have a purpose, but they generally have really high interest rates. So they're okay for short term. So there's only, only one circumstance I can think of where a credit card is a good thing to do in flight training. And again, this is not advice. This is just a benefit is that they do have some level of consumer protection. Obviously, pay if you're paying installments and things, but you're going to pay that back at the end of that same month. So you're not accruing interest. If you've got your money, you know, say you've paid a thousand pound installment, two thousand pound installment to a flight school that you're going to pay off during that month. If anything happens and you potentially could lose that money, there will be some level of protection you have within um, the services provided by that credit card provider. So pros then of using credit for flight training. So having all the required funds enables you to train more intensively. So if you've got all the cash there ready, so if you had the 17,000, 20,000, whatever it is, ready to go, um, then, you know, if you've got the time, then generally that means you can do the training more intensively. Now, what this means for you is that you're more likely to do it in lesser hours, resulting in less money spent. Okay, so we've noticed as a general thing that people who train intensively, so they're flying weekly, um, generally will spend less money on flight training because their skills are not eroding so much week to week. They're retaining more of the stuff that they've been taught. This is the main reason why the majority of our students now that have the cash choose our fast track program because it enables them to fly frequently, uh, enables them to get through the process with ease uh, and not overspend. If, you know, if you're doing your course over three years, for example, um, the likelihood is you will do more hours. That's inevitable because you're going to be flying less frequently. And also with that is inflation. So every time, you know, you, you go another year into your training process, the prices are going to go up. It's as simple as that. Credit cards. We just touched on credit cards. They offer security in terms of protection against losing funds invested in prepayments. If you're paying by installments, then this is a good option provided that you pay it off in a monthly manner so you're not hitting lots of uh, interest charges. Okay, last one is paying in larger payments. So some establishments will allow you to get a better deal if you pay with installments or if you pay um, like bulk amounts up front. Again, no, you need to protect yourself on this because if your money is held within the school, then it is at risk, you know, long term. If you've got huge amounts of money, you know, it's, it's not uncommon that people put large deposits down. In some flying schools, we won't actually accept large deposits here. Our maximum deposit is £2,000. Um, but I have heard of people paying for courses, you know, completely up front. That is not a wise thing to do. Um, it, it just puts you at risk. Okay, so don't do that. So if you're going to pay in installments, keep it as small installments and then fly it off. So use it as a credit balance. So put, say, £2,000 down like we do. You fly it off, you know, one, two months later, you're topping it up again. So your money is not held in somebody else's account. It's far better for you, even if you've got all of the funds, to keep that money to yourself. So cons are using credit then. So obviously, when you borrow money, they're going to charge you interest on it. So depending on the rate and the term of the repayment, you could end up paying many thousands back in interest. So just be aware that if you're borrowing money, this interest you're going to have to pay as well, that's adding to your training costs. Number two, affordability. Once training is complete, as we touched on earlier on, you still need to keep flying. So how are you going to afford to fly afterwards if you're paying this money back with interest? that you've accrued during your training. So make sure the debt is affordable for you. And lastly, should you not complete the training, you've still got to repay this debt with interest. So let's say you've got a personal loan out for 17,000, 20,000, whatever. Um, you've still got to pay this money back, okay? Um, but essentially you could have 17,000 pounds worth of debt, no pilot's license. And even if it, you know, if the training doesn't work out for you and you don't get all the way through the course and you've spent the majority of it, you know, that money's never coming back to you. You've still got to pay that debt off and you've got nothing to show for it. So please do take all of these things into account. So in summary, 
our overall opinion for PPL training specifically is that debt should be avoided unless you're in the very near future able to pay it off without difficulty. If you did get a personal loan for training, don't pay for a course in its entirety to get a better deal. If a training organisation insists on you paying the, the full course value to get a better deal, walk away. Okay, go and find another training organisation that will let you pay in either small instalments or pay as you go. Think of other options. Okay, you know, could you perhaps get, you know, additional income, okay, rather than borrowing money? Could you, you know, do you have time to do a second job, a part-time job that could bring you in some money? Is there a skill that you have that you could use to make some extra money? Or have you got family that could support you? You know, it's much better to borrow the money from family, family type interest rates, which are probably zero, and they'll support you. That is another option, you know, could you go to the family and say, look, I really want to do this. Could anybody help me out? There may be somebody who could help you partly or, or maybe in its entirety, you know, but you don't, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. But the bank of mum and dad or the bank of family is largely more flexible than a high street lender is asking for their money. So, so lastly, if you're interested in our fast track program, you can take advantage of the benefit of flying really frequently. Okay, now we've had people pass in literally a few months. Um, fastest we actually ever did it was in four weeks which is still we still struggle to believe for ourselves. You know, generally if you're doing a fast track program you're going to have it done in a matter of months okay you know th these type of people do not go on to fly for years and years because they're flying intensively enough that they don't need to we also have a fast track light which has a lesser commitment so for people who are a little bit short on time um, you still get the benefits of fast track but it's at half the commitment so you only need to fly two hours per week both of these courses are currently with discount Okay, there is £504 discount off our 2023 Fast Track courses. So if you're interested in getting your course using our Fast Track program, you can take advantage of this discount, but you need to sign up before the end of the year. Okay, so you need to have a signed contract course started before the end of this year. We've got just 10 places available with this discount. So you don't want to be hanging around. You know, all you've got to do is get signed up get on the course. You don't have to have completed the course by the end of this year, obviously. We just need to have you signed up, uh, ready to start your lessons. So I'm putting a link in the show notes to our offer. It will tell you all about the course, what it includes, what the current offer is. Um, and, and there's a, a couple of testimonials and case studies and things on there as well for people who've already done it, if you're interested in their progress on there. So the link is in the show notes. There's also a link in our link tree on our social media account. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, ding the bell for further episodes. It really does help us grow the channel and bring out more content for you guys and see you on the next episode. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.